What's going on guys, Ben here, we're back for some more Golf Clash, and today I was finally able to get the last three shootout holes for you guys on Tour 9, so this will be part two of our Tour 9 shootout series, and we're going to start off with this newer hole that was added right before the Haunted Hills Tournament, it was also the Golden Shot Par 3 hole that we used when we did the Golden Shot, this, this past Golden Shot, this one here, I like to do it exactly how this guy is doing it, me and him are both going to do it the exact same way, you want to just land it in that rough and run your ball guy all the way up to the hole basically just for your wind hit a perfect shot and it should get pretty close with the headwind i like to run my ball guide a little further past the hole just slightly though because if you go past the hole it will kind of roll down and go past the hole into the fringe or even on the little fairway spot over there but um as long as you don't go too far you should be okay usually i can get it pretty close on this hole but i was only able to get this hole one time the entire time I played Tour 9. Well, two times. I got this hole two times the entire time I played Tour 9. I finished Tour 9 last night and only got this hole twice. The the one, the one, newer, other newer one where you bounce it over the water, that's the one that I got 90% of the time in Tour 9. It was really weird. It was like that was the only shootout hole available or something. Um, the last shootout hole that you're going to see in this video, I also only got it one time. So I'm going to have two different versions of it for you to see. Uh, one that I did and a buddy of mine, Logan, also recorded one that he got in Tour 10. This That hole is also in Tour 11. It's, excuse me, he got it in Tour 11. So he sent me his video on how he played it as well. This one here though, like I said, it's, it's not a hard par 3 at all. You just want to bounce it in that rough, run it up to the hole, and you're good to go. Now, there's another way you can bounce it on that first fairway spot, but I don't like to do that because that bounce is kind of inconsistent and don't always work the way you want it to. It can bounce a little further left or a little further right. So the best way I find to play this hole is the way you've seen it played here. Now, we're going to go on to the next shootout hole. This hole here can be tricky with a headwind. Now, with this video here, I'm going to have a tailwind, uh, and my opponent's going to make a really good shot here as well. Uh, with this hole here, though, I want to talk more about a headwind. I understand this video is going to be showing it with a tailwind and you can you know see what you want to do with a tailwind as well um, but with a headwind this hole is going to play a little tougher because when you look at your ball guide and you see where your first bounce lands when you have a headwind that first bounce is not going to land where it says it's going to land it's going to land shorter shorter so a lot of people you'll see when they go to bounce this shot over will land in the edge of that rough up there and it won't get all the way to the green it'll end up short on the on in the rough or in the fairway so that's something you really want to pay attention to with this hole when you're playing with a headwind what i like to do that helps me out is i check where that first bounce is going to land and then i make sure my ball guide is going slightly past the hole usually I only put like two bars of backspin with the sniper on this hole when i have a headwind with a tailwind, you want to put three to four. Basically, you just want to line it up where it looks like it's going to go into the hole, adjust for your wind, and you're good to go. Now, I have seen people play this hole here over to the left. If you see that bunker, I've seen them play it over to the left, short of that bunker, bounce it over, and curl it in. I have seen that work, and I've also seen that go well past the hole. So it's up to you how you want to play it. But as you can see, my bounce right there, it was going to land just past uh, the edge of the roof. But with that tailwind, that bounce is going to go further. So your bounces are longer when you have a tailwind and your bounces are shorter when you have a headwind. That's something you really have to pay attention to once you get into the higher tours is you got to know that your bounce is going to be different than what it says it's going to be with different winds. I ended up losing this shootout here. My opponent made a really good shot. I hit mine great to the right and it ended up taking the wind, took it further to the right. But. Like I said, that hole there is really more important when you have a headwind than it is a tailwind. I wasn't, didn't, wasn't able to get a tailwind with that shot. I mean, a headwind on that hole, but I was able to at least bring you a video of it. This hole here. All right, I have two different videos of this hole here coming up. One, I needed more time to talk about it. Two, there's uh, different ways that you can play it. Now, but all the ways that you're going to see are going to be off this island, which I think is the best way to play this hole. But one thing you really, really, really have to remember on this hole, guys, you're at the shortest end of your club, your shortest length of your club on this shot. 
So you want to slightly underplay this wind. You see it's a 7 mile an hour wind from right to left. I only adjusted for 6 miles an hour wind. I only adjusted for 6 rings and I put a slight curl to the right on it to even counter it more. And as you can see it landed right in the center. This that's the biggest thing, the biggest problem I see with people having problems with this hole is that they don't understand that you're at the shortest part of your club on here. And what you really need to do is underplay this wind. Hold on just a second. You really have to underplay this wind on this hole because it don't play like you think it's going to play. Now, I also wanted to really, I really was hoping I'd get this hole a few more times. As you can see, I was almost finished with Tour 9 at this point. I finished Tour 9 last night, so I'm going to be starting Tour 10 for you guys today. But as you can see, I was almost finished with my, with my trophies. I was almost finished with Tour 9 when I finally got this hole. Now, like I said, the biggest thing to remember is with a headwind, you want to have, what I do is I have my ball guide going slightly past the hole when I line it up. And I let, you know, I adjust for my wind. And then I let the ball run up to the hole. Now, he didn't put enough backspin on his. I really, I think he he adjusted right. He adjusted for a lower uh, lower rings than what he needed to. He just didn't have enough backspin on it. Um, now, I'm going to have another video of my buddy Logan. He's going to be playing it the same way, but he's going to be playing it with a cataclysm. And you will see here that he's also going to underplay the wind. Like I said, that's the biggest thing I want to stress with this hole. I see so many people that land this ball in the rough or in the bunker around this little island and they're clueless of why it happened. And it, it comes up all the time in Golf Clash Elite. This hole comes up so many times in Golf Clash Elite and people just don't understand that you have to underplay this win. So I just, that's the reason I brought two separate videos of this hole, guys, because you really have to underplay this win. And he, I think he had like a 10 mile an hour win and he only adjusted this the cataclysm is like two per ring i think he adjusted four rings so he he four and a half rings something like that so he only adjusted for about i guess nine miles an hour something like that this guy here he's got a sniper which is you know one of the best clubs in the game it's extremely accurate you know it's got 100 percent accuracy accuracy it's got a full ball guide. I mean, you can't really go wrong with the sniper. Now, personally, uh, me as well, like Logan, I use the Cataclysm in Tour 11. But you can't really go long, wrong with the sniper, guys. Uh, I was a Guardian club man for all the way through until I hit Tour 11 on my first account. But I really use the sniper a lot more now. Now, like I said, guys... Just make sure you underplay this win. I was hoping to get a video of somebody going from the left side because the left side is also a good way to go. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. But anyway, guys, this is the end of this video. You got two examples on this hole and you got all the par threes for Tour 9. We're going to be starting on Tour 10 next and I'll see you guys next time.